Oh, ladies and gentlemen, hope you enjoyed that break. All right, everybody. Yes, we are. So, uh, Senator Monty, we were going to have Mariva and Senator Hancock Tango here in a second. So you are uh, in just some nick of time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving forward to Senate Bill 1339 uh, by Senator Monning, uh, focusing on the public social services, in particular, inter-county inter inter -county transfers. Uh, Senator, I want to make sure that you are comfortable with the committee amendments. Yes, and I will start by accepting the committee's suggested amendments uh, that makes conforming change to existing welfare and institutions code. Thank you so much. And I just want to let you know you have bipartisan support on this Great. bill, which means uh, I think we can move it uh, here pretty quickly. Good. Thank you for the tip. Okay, there we go. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Uh, no, let, let me at least. Uh, all right. If I were bold, I would have done I that. Did. This will be short and sweet. Please. Uh, Senate Bill 1339 modernizes and simplifies the intercounty transfer process and state statute to make sure that the benefits are not interrupted when a beneficiary of the CalWORKs, CalFresh, or Medi-Cal programs relocates. Specifically, the bill will eliminate the requirement of a face-to-face -face interview if permitted by federal law. It will allow the beneficiary to report the change to either county. It will allow the beneficiary to report the change online to the extent that such technology is available. And it will clarify the inter-county transfer process and access to services for Medi-Cal beneficiaries. There's been some confusion among counties with regard to the implementation of intercounty transfers, and there are instances in which the sending or receiving county does not fully understand the process due to current law being vague. SB 1339 seeks to clarify and improve the law regarding intercounty transfer in order to prevent unnecessary disruptions in benefits. Uh, we have several witnesses in support. I'm sure they'll be brief. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this afternoon. Thank you so much, Senator. I know it's been a busy one for you. I'm going to ask each of the witnesses to please keep it to one minute or less, please. And I stayed up all night. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Hi, hey. Good morning or Good morning. afternoon. Yeah. Um, I'm Judy Darnell with United Ways of California. Strong support of this bill. Obviously, we're one of the three co-sponsors. Um, United Way thinks that it is very important to remove unnecessary barriers for people to receive benefits and to um, get them easily transferred, especially when they move across artificial boundaries that are like county lines. So I'll stop there and say thank you for your support and request your I vote. You're absolutely right. It is such an important issue. Thank you. Please. Elizabeth Landsberg with the Western Center on Law and Poverty, one of the co-sponsors. Urge your support. CalWORKs, CalFresh, and Medi-Cal are all statewide programs. People's coverage um, and benefits shouldn't be interrupted when they move from county to county. And we're pleased to help modernize and streamline this process. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Kevin Asley and Coalition California Welfare Rights Organizations, one of the co-sponsors of the bill. This statute was enacted in the previous century when they had no technology, when they had monthly reporting. Every month you had to make a report and they had to determine eligibility. Today we have semi-annual reporting. So there's no need for an interview every time you move from one county to another county because during the semi-annual reporting, there's about two different things that you have to report. If you're fleeing felon or your income goes over a certain limit. So that's why we're wiping out the interview because it's not cost effective. Thank you. We urge and I vote. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. We'd like to be able to see if there are any other individuals that would like to speak in support briefly on the bill. If you could please state your first and last, the organization, and your brief comment. Kathy Sunderling with the County Welfare Directors Association in support. Kathy, thank you so much, and thanks for hanging today. Sarah Palmer, California Association of Food Banks, in strong support. We believe that this bill is very, very important. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Uh, Bob Campbell, California Alternative Payment Program Association, in support. Bob, thanks so much for being here. Would anyone else like to speak in support? Would like to welcome anyone that may have concerns or who are opposed. Please, welcome. Ethan Davis, MSW student at Simmons College. Um, I was gonna ask this on the previous bill, but I guess I'll ask it on this one. What factors are in place to mitigate risk of fraud uh, if an interview is done by a phone and you can't verify via a face? Are there identification numbers or other things that could mitigate that risk? Thank you so much. We'll take that back with the committee and we'll bring that forward to the other. Thank you. Anyone else have concerns or uh, may have uh, some opposition? 
All right. Why don't we bring it back uh, to Senator Monning. Senator Monning, if you want to be able to address that to the sure. committee. Sure. I'll lead off. Others may <laughs> want to respond to that. My understanding is the bill that was just presented by Senator on Pan telephonic. was the one that focused on telephonic. This bill does not change eligibility standards or requirements. It simply um, helps facilitate communication between counties, between officials. Um, so the eligibility determination is not taking place at the time of this transfer of eligibility. That's already been determined. Perfect. Thank you so much. We'd like to better see if we have any questions or comments from the committee. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move the bill. I think it's an excellent bill. I also wanted to acknowledge and thank former assembly member Bob Campbell, who had a long and illustrious career serving on many of these committees and championing many of these issues for being here with us today in a new role. <laughs> thank you so much, Senator, and welcome, Mr. Sunderman. Now, it's good to see you, and thank you so much for being here. My goodness. We'd like to see if Senator Wynn has any uh, questions or comments. So we have a uh, motion by Senator Hancock to pass as amended, as amended to health committee. Uh, I think we had your closing statement, Mr. Monning. Absolutely. I led with my clothes. Absolutely. Respectfully, <laughs> Ash Gear. I vote. Thank you so much. Let's go to Mr. Teamer. McGuire. Aye. McGuire, aye. Barry Hill, Hancock. Aye. Hancock, aye. Lou, when? Aye. When, aye. Three. Thank you so much. That is a 3-0. Has enough to get out, but we will keep the roll open to allow uh, Senator Lou to be able to add on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, members. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. It's good to see you, sir. Appreciate you being here. We now have the man, the myth, the legend from uh, Temecula. Senator Stone uh, is here today. We welcome the, the great senator from Temecula. He's going to be presenting Senate Bill 1373, focus on CalWORKs, uh, welfare to work, and supportive services. Um, Senator, we have bipartisan support, uh, which means we're going to ask your witnesses to please keep it to one minute or less. Senator, the floor is yours, and we welcome you, sir. It's good to see you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members. It's an honor to be before you today. Uh, first of all, we'd like to accept the suggested amendments listed in the committee analysis as author amendments. SB 1373 would simplify the welfare to work issuance of supportive services to CalWORKs participants by issuing bus passes to participants unless they want to drive a car and claim mileage. Participants would be able to submit a claim online if the county has the technology to do so. Uh, if they want, they claim actual expenses. Participants who are attending post-secondary education full-time would receive $500 standard allowance to cover their book costs and other school-related expenses. For part-time students, they would receive $250. Like transportation, students would be able to submit a claim online if the county has the technology to do so, if they want to claim actual expenses. This is an effort to simplify and streamline the issuance of supportive services for welfare-to-work participants. And with me, I have Kevin Eslanian, who is the sponsor of the bill, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you so much, Mr. Senator. Appreciate that. Kevin. Yeah, good afternoon, Kevin. As the Coalition for California Welfare Rights Organizations, this is designed to simplify the system and make it more efficient to make sure that people get the supportive services to which they're entitled to. Thank you. And I urge you to I vote. Thank you so much. We'd like to be able to ask if we have any individuals that would like to be able to speak in support. If you could just please limit to your first and last organization and your position on the bill. Elizabeth Landsberg, Western Center on Law and Poverty here in support. Thank Elizabeth, you. Thank you so much. Simmelman. Bob Campbell, California Alternative Payment Association, in support. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Sarah Palmer, California Association of Food Banks, in support. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to be able to speak in support of the bill? Would like to be able to see if anyone has concerns or is opposed, if you could please come forward at this time. All right. Why don't we bring it back to the committee to be able to see if we have any questions and or comments for the great senator. I think it's an excellent bill. Move the bill. We have a recommendation on the floor to be able to pass as amended, amended. to appropriations. Closing statement, sir. Thank you. I just respectfully ask for my vote. Thank you very much. All right. Let's do it. Let's do for a roll call vote, please. Mr. Steamer. McGuire. Aye. McGuire, aye. Barry Hill. Hancock. Aye. Hancock, aye. Lou. When? Aye. When, aye. Three. Senator Stone, you are out. Three, zero. We are going to keep the roll open. Thank you, sir. Uh, allow Senator Lou to be able to add on, who is currently uh, living the dream of transportation. So thank you so much. All right. Nice job. Thank you very much.
All right, ladies and gentlemen. Five minute break. We're going to take five minutes. <laughs> so uh, it is 2.41. We're coming back. 246, 248, right in there. Hi, dang. Uh, All right. Senator Wynn will keep us on time. We'll be right back. Uh, and again, chocolate in the back. We're going to recess for five to seven minutes. So thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are reconvening uh, the Senate and Human Services Committee. We do have a quorum. We welcome uh, one of the best here today. We are grateful uh, that Senator Leno uh, is going to be talking to us about Senate Bill 1232, focus on CalFresh eligibility determinations. Mr. Leno, the floor is yours, and I know committee members will be coming forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the very gracious and generous no, introduction. It's, it's true, though. Uh, as this committee knows well, California has a very high rate of poverty, somewhere between 16 and 22, 24 percent, depending upon which metric we are using. And we also know that without our CalFresh program, which of course is federally funded, state pays for administrative costs, as well as our CalWORKs program, that our rates of poverty would be even higher. California has among the very lowest rates of eligible Californians participating in our CalFresh program. Many of us in the legislature have worked over the recent years to do something about that, removing the require, requirement for fingerprinting. I think we were the last state in the country to get rid of that and other unnecessary hurdles. There are still some in place and the purpose of this bill is to deal with some of those. And by doing so, we are going to deal with the fact of Californians going to bed hungry, children going to school hungry, of course, which is a formula for failure and falling behind and potentially dropping out of school. And if a child drops out of school because they're not in school prepared to succeed, and don't get a high school diploma, they have a seven times greater likelihood of finding their way into our criminal justice system. So all these dots of issues that we deal with here are all very much connected. So. California is currently using a private consumer credit reporting service called the number, the work number for employment and income verification. County administering agencies use these credit reports to investigate suspected fraud, but often don't use them to streamline enrollment. This bill, 1232, will remove barriers to signing up for CalFresh and CalWORKs by requiring local agencies and I want to underscore this, that are already using consumer credit reports for program eligibility to eliminate redundant application paperwork. And the question we should be asking is, why should we require applicants to provide copies of pay stubs if their income can be quickly verified using credit reports? And keep in mind that the low income people we're talking about don't have the opportunity to take off time from work. They may not have the transportation to get down to a county office. We put hurdles in their way that they just cannot surmount. So we create the inefficiencies which lead to the failures that we're trying to address now. So we already use these reports to investigate fraud. This bill suggests that we use them to remove application barriers and increase access to CalFresh and CalWORKs for eligible working families. Finally, the bill will ensure that applicants denied enrollment have access to all the information that was used to determine their eligibility, including credit and employment data provided by the work number. Currently, some applicants appealing denied enrollment don't have access to this information before the appeal hearing, making it almost impossible for them to correct any inaccuracies. So SB 1232 will help prevent hunger and reduce poverty among working families by increasing their access to benefits through CalFresh and CalWORKs. And I do ask for your I vote. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Senator. Uh, and this is receiving bipartisan support today as well, which is fantastic. and do appreciate uh, both sides coming together, uh, which means we'd ask each of your witnesses to be able to keep it to a minute or less as well. We can so do that. Please. 
Yeah. Mr. Chair and members, Elizabeth Landsberg with the Western Center on Law and Poverty, and we're pleased to sponsor this measure and appreciate Senator Leonard's leadership on this issue and many issues that are important to low-income consumers. So I don't have much to add, you know, beyond what he said. We think electronic verification does make sense, but we do want to make sure that if applicants' um, credit reports are used, that they have the opportunity to correct information if it's wrong. This isn't theoretical. We had a woman in Orange County last year who was told, who was denied benefits. She was told that there was was income showing from a from a fast food restaurant she'd never worked at. She was told to prove that she had never worked at that restaurant, um, and the, she actually took time off of her her real job, went to that restaurant, asked them to sign a form, which they didn't want to do, understandably. So this is not a theoretical problem. It is real. We need to give consumers the opportunity to correct their information and and move forward knowingly. And we urge your support of the bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. What an amazing story. And hello again, um, Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, again, my name is Sarah Palmer. I'm here as the advocacy manager of the California Association of Food Banks, as well as a former CalFresh recipient and single mother. Um, have firsthand experience with the uh, barriers that um, Senator Leno mentioned. Um, and as an organization, we do support the streamlining of this process and uh, increasing transparency so that Individuals do have the, the um, awareness of what's happening on their credit report and are able to clean it up. Um, and I'll keep it short because that's what you all requested. Thank, thank you. you. And also, thank you for bringing that personal story in as well. Absolutely. Really thank you so much. Would like to be able to see if we have any else, anyone else that would like to be able to speak in support of the bill. Mr. Assemblyman. No. Bob Campbell, California Alternative Payment Program Association in support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Would anyone else like to speak in support? I'd like to be able to open it up to any individual that may have uh, concerns and or who are opposed. All right. Why don't we bring back to the committee to be able to see if we have any questions or comments from Senator Wynn or Senator Hancock. All right. We have uh, a motion on the floor by Senator Hancock. We'd like to be able to offer closing comments. Ask for your I vote. All right. There we go. Closing comments. Let's do roll call. McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Berryhill? Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Lou? When? Aye. When, aye. Three. That is uh, three zero to uh, pass on to judiciary, so thank you so much. We're going to keep the roll open uh, for Senator Lou, uh, but that is a three zero. That means it will uh, get out of committee. We're going to hang here for just a bit uh, to be able to check in with the senator. Uh, because I'm also going to be following her in transportation. So uh, why don't we check in on where she's at?
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to reconvene from our recess, uh, and we are going to have Senator Lou add on. Let's go to Senate Bill 904, Hertzberg, if you can give a quick recap, Mr. Teamer. The motion is due pass to appropriations. Um, the chair votes aye. That has three votes so far. Barry Hill, Lou. Aye. Lou votes aye. Four. Four zero. That is moving forward. Thank you so much. There's a senator named Lou that had two uh, two bills today. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, let's go to Senate Bill 942. If you can please give a recap and a vote. The motion is due pass as amended to Judiciary Committee. Um, the chair votes aye. There are three votes so far. Barry Hill, Lou. Lou, I four. Thank you so much. We have four votes to move Senate Bill 942. Let's move to Senate Bill 947. And Pan, recap and vote, please. The motion is due pass as amended to Appropriations Committee. The, um, the bill has two votes. The chair votes aye. Barry Hill, Lou. Aye. Lou, I win. So three votes. Thank you so much. Again, this is Senator Liu, uh, Senate Bill 1056. Uh, recap and vote, please. The motion is due pass as amended to Judiciary Committee. The chair votes aye. The bill has three votes already. Barry Hill, Liu. Aye. Liu, aye. Four. Thank you so much. Let's go to Senate Bill 1201 by Senator Mitchell. The motion is due pass as amended to rules. The, the chair votes aye. The bill has three votes. Barry Hill, Liu. Aye. Liu, aye. Four. Thank you so much. Let's move to Senate Bill 1232, and that's Senator Leno. The motion is due pass to Judiciary. The um, chair votes aye. The bill has three votes. Barry Hill, Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. Four. Four votes. Thank you so much. Let's move to Senate Bill 1339, and Senator Monning. The motion is due pass as amended to Health Committee. The chair votes aye. The bill has, th or has three votes so far. Barry Hill, Lou. Lou, aye, four. Four votes. Uh, that moves out. Let's go to Senator Stone, finally, in Senate Bill 1373. The motion is due pass as amended to Appropriations Committee. The bill has three votes. The chair votes aye. Barry Hill, Lou. Aye. Lou, aye, four. All right, four votes. That moves. I want to say thank you so much, Senator Lou, no, for coming back. Uh, we appreciate uh, our sergeants for all the work. And again, Mariva is back. Hot dang. So uh, good stuff. We're so excited about it. Welcome back, Mariva. And again, Taryn and Mark. Nice job as well, holding down the fort. So thank you very much for being here, and we'll see you here in the next couple of weeks. We are officially adjourned.